Well, hello, welcome to my videos, and today I will be demonstrating uh, OS command injection attack. Before we jump into OS command injection attack right away, I just like to explain to you that uh, how a web server request and response works in the background, and also I would like to say that I am not going to be demonstrating the videos on the usual BWAP or DVWA because I just developed my own web application just for vulnerability testing purposes so I can show you something new and that won't be monotonous so let's get going this was this is the HTTP request that I'm going to show you you can see that I wrote protocol colon slash slash host colon port slash path question mark query what this means in a, a real world example is something like HTTP which in this case is the protocol something.com which is the host slash index.php in this case which is a file and right after the slash index.php means the file called index.php is residing directly in the root directory of the web server okay because this could have been something.com slash home slash index.php which would imply that there is a subdirectory called home where there is a file called index.php in this case there is no subdirectories which means index.php resides in the home directory in the root directory of the web server then there is this question mark in this case a question mark in web application means the word where so it's like asking a question to the web application via the URL this is this whole thing is a URL right I'm asking something to the web server via this URL this procedure this method is called get in HTTP so whenever we send something or ask something to the web server or from the web server via the URL that is a get request when we do the same thing via a form where there is nothing on the URL which is of course a more secure way to do things is that is a post request so in this case I used get so that I could uh, show you what happens in a get request right so HTTP slash something dot com slash index dot PHP where some value or some variable represents something in this case maybe it's a query it's maybe maybe it can it can be like index dot PHP where uh, name equals John so everything that the web application has on John will be displayed on the web uh, web browser so it's just simple as that I'm just going to uh, go to my web application that I made right now and I'm, I'm going to be using Firefox for this demonstration okay so I just saved on my bookmark the website let's see what happens uh, um, network uh, no there is no proxy all right so this is this is like a hospital database or a hospital web application that I made uh, you see every modern hospitals uses these type of websites where they search for something maybe and something comes up and we do we do things in the web application we do everything in the web applications today right so I'm not going to be demonstrating everything on this web application right now because that they are saved for future videos but and also do not mix up mix this demonstration up with modern actual web applications because today's websites are way way much more complex so I'm going to demonstrate this with a new input with a new information maybe John Doe is the new patient name I'm just keeping it real simple uh, John okay someone doctor someone I'm going to leave that as paid for now okay the patient is successfully admitted let me see John yeah I get everything I get everything uh, I get every details from of this patient and now I'm going to discharge this patient but this is where I'm going to take a pause because uh, this is the part where I attack the web application okay so when I hover my mouse uh, on discharge patient you can see on the left button in this in, in this part this, you can see the link 127.0.0.1 which is the local host of course slash isoh underscore vol slash discharge underscore auth dot php where patient id equals clzh double eight one seven right this is a get request so i'm going to take this whole thing 
into Burp Suite. Burp Suite uh, is a web application penetration testing framework which is used to uh, test vulnerabilities on web applications. Because what happens is everything we do on the web browser is going to be reflected on Burp Suite screen. So we can uh, repeat some jobs, we can brute force uh, something on the website. Uh, let me see if these options are all right. I'm just going to turn this on. You, you see request HTTP method, which means get and post. You see this part? This is what happens. This is what we are going to do. We want get and post requests from us and from the responses. So everything is running, I guess. So let's just do this part again so we can see that if, they, if there is something happening or not. Uh, John. Yes, let me just add this to scope so there would be no problem finding it. Yeah, you can see every page that is supposed to be loaded is reflecting in the burp suite. Even discharge auth.php along with the discharge auth.php where PUID equals CLZH8817. This is not exactly the part where I show you the attack, it's just a little bit later. And for this part, I'm not going to be using um, the interception because this is not what where we need this. So patient successfully discharged and details saved locally. Okay, this is the part where I want you to focus on. I did something very bad here, very vulnerable, which is check server for reconfirmation, which means I want to see that if this patient details have been saved on a text file on the web server. So what I did is I did the same checking but used comment prompt, Windows comment prompt, Windows shell, which is the Windows shell, uh, to check if the file johndoe.txt exists or not. You see, you can see this, right? It looks same, exactly same, like we, we would do in CMD, right? Just let me go to the same directory and see. This, this looks exactly same, right? So this is the bad part because we are executing the Windows command prompt from the web application which means if the data, if the data that we are providing to the CMD, if it's not sanitized, which means if the escape variables and the escape characters are not perfectly sanitized, we can pass everything, every characters through, the, through a PHP request to the CMD, right? So we can do uh, we will check that right so let's see what we can do is check server for reconfirmation we are going to send John Doe this name and something else we are going to use burp suite to do that so I'm going to turn intercept on again and we are going to check server for reconfirmation again and we got the request right you see here I use post and there is nothing there is no queries on the url it's just like isohvol slash syscall.php there is no urls here so it would be a little hard to inject comments that's that's the way i did it so let's check what happens okay you can see that the name is plus john plus do plus which means the plus represents space in this url because uh, that's how a web server works it doesn't recognizes characters it transforms the characters into a hex code or something like that i i'm not exactly sure so what we are going to do is we are going to send this to intruder and there we are going to inject some more commands let's see what happens okay i'm going to clear up the positions and add a new position in this part i'm going to add something which is going to be and you know in comment prompt the separator for comments for the separator for two or three comments is the sign ampersand which is shift seven right shift seven ampersand nc which is netcat minus uh, no uh, name resolve in v verbose listen to port 123 and 4 and i want to execute a server uh, with the cmd.exe with this file so what happens I'm going to set up a server a netcat server on this website 
via the same post request we are sending the name so we can check if the name John Doe exists and we are going to set a server a netcat server which will listen on the port 1234 and execute cmdx for anyone that connects to this server so let's test that okay let's test that if it works I'm not sure let's test um, the position is set right so John Doe it will work something like John Doe this is the position where I write and the netcat server command okay start attack let's see what happens we are getting a timeout right here right the command the request isn't completely executed which means there is a net there is a CMD somewhere running in the background now we are going to open up Kali Linux okay we are going to quickly check uh, the IP of the victim machine which is 1.2 right so let me just go to my Kali Linux and NC which is the listening uh, which is the connecting command for netcat NC 192.168.1.2 and the port was 1234 right yeah pond this is the same directory as CMD right you can see C exam HDOS ISOH one we got the directory we got the CMD shell from my attackers machine so I got everything I literally got everything so if I am able to for example make uh, maybe IP config we see my IP is currently 1.2 but my vict my attackers machine IP my Kali Linux machines IP is 1.5 this is reflecting 1.2 because we are directly connected to my Windows machine via netcat we injected a netcat server command through the web server and passed it to the CMD exe so both the comments got executed both the dir command and the netcat server command got executed in my victim machine and that's why I am able to get a shell from my attackers machine so for example if I am able to make a directory up there maybe like uh, mkdir hsekd let's see what happens okay you see there is there, there should be another folder HSEKD. Now let's check from my host machine if there is something like that. See, there is hacked. There is the folder has been created. We can also start a notepad. You know, notepad. Look, a notepad opens up in our host in our machine, right? In our attack uh, victim machine. So if if I am the victim and you are the hacker, and if you did this, my notepad would open up just like that. So you hacked me. You hacked my server. And I will freak out. So this is a perfect example of a command injection attack. Even I can shut down. Even if I try to shut down with this command, maybe 20. See, Windows is sh sh shut down in less than a minute. So I can do these stuffs. I'm just quickly going to cancel the shutdown. Okay, log off is cancelled. But y you know what you can do when you got a sh reverse shell. Uh, this is actually a bind shell because I connected from the attacker machine to the victim machine not the other way around the victim machine did not listen to our server so this is the this, this was an example of a bind shell by the way so this is how a command injection attack works so until next time where I come up with a newer video thank you for watching bye